Welcome to Secrets Out Idaho. Each week, we let you in on the secrets of Southern Idaho and speak to the people who make it such a unique hidden gem. I'm your host, Connie Stouffer. On today's episode, we'll learn about all the best secret spots in Idaho, what it's like for young professionals in a small town, and what life is like when you found your dream job. We talk to social media coordinator, entrepreneur, and outdoor adventure enthusiast, Sarah Rohrbach. She'll share tips for finding the best spots, how to make friends in a new town, and whether Idaho is actually just a government conspiracy. Sarah Rohrbach, thank you so much for joining me on the show. I'm really excited to interview and glad to have you here. Thanks for having me. Of course. So I'm going to start just by having you tell me a little bit about yourself. Of course. So I grew up in South Dakota, uh, lived there my whole life, and I graduated college from Black Hill State, and I moved to Idaho immediately after, um, after applying for jobs out here. And I knew I wanted to live in Idaho because I love the mountains and everything about it. Mm-hmm. So um, so you moved here about a year and a half ago? Yep, I've yeah. been living here since 2018 May. Yeah. So tell me about your experience and was it what you thought it was going to be or how's Idaho kind of lived up to what you were hoping it would be? I was really intimidated right away because there's a myth in South Dakota saying that Idaho doesn't exist, <laughs> that it's a government conspiracy. So I was worried because I actually didn't know a single person who lived here. Um, Do you think that's South Dakota's way of keeping people from leaving? Maybe. (laughs) Yeah, they kind of have the how Idaho likes their locals to stay too. South Dakota is similar to that. I actually did find the cultures were really similar. Farm life, but also decent sized towns. um, So it was really easy to mesh in with everyone. Yeah. And so didn't know anybody here and then just kind of figuring it out. Yep. Didn't know a single person, but the locals are so kind. Um, It seemed like everyone wanted you to be a part of their family and they really took me in immediately. Uh, So tell me what you've been doing here since you got here. So the main reason I came here was for uh, my dream job, which (laughs) is working for Southern Idaho Tourism. And with them, I am a social media coordinator, blog writer, and content creator creator. So that means you're out seeing all the best places. Yep. I'm always <laughs> hiking. Um, usually I go out, take pictures on the hike, go home, write a blog about it, and then share it on all our social media platforms. Awesome. So if someone's never been to Idaho before, or they're still under the myth that Idaho doesn't exist, and they're going to come <laughs> out and explore it, where are some places that they should definitely check out? Well, the obvious one is sending them to Shoshone Falls, because that's our pride and joy. <laughs> um, past that, I would send them to City of Rocks, Craters of the Moon, and In the Canyon, um, and Box Canyon, those preserves are beautiful beautiful as well. Awesome. So um, after interviewing lots of people on this podcast, um, some people grew up here, but then there's lots of people who have moved here. And one comment that I get, particularly from people who have moved else from elsewhere, is that Idaho is really wild and it's an adventurous kind of place to live. And there's lots of rugged open space. And I think maybe for people who maybe come from a more urban area or aren't used to that kind of landscape can be intimidated to go out and explore on their own and go on a hike out in some place they've never been. Do you have some tips for people if they're feeling a little intimidated or not sure if that's for them? Absolutely. I was definitely intimidated right away as well. Um, But every hike I went on, all the other hikers were waving at me and smiling at me. Um, I've gotten lost multiple times (laughs) and they've always directed me in the perfect direction. And I've even had men wait for me while I went into a cave (laughs) just to make sure that I got out safe. So everyone's been super accommodating and nice. That's awesome that you can feel safe and kind of randomly meet people and friends and make friends out on the the trail. Yeah, That's awesome. So uh, tell me what it's like being a social media coordinator. I I feel like people see like Instagram influencers or things like that. But tell me what kind of like a day in the life of, of, you know, doing your job. So it's absolutely fun. I didn't even realize that that was a kind of job. Um, But basically, I go through Facebook, go through Instagram, look at all the places that people it's trending and what we need to promote to make our page better. Um, And so every day I'm just trying to get better and better pictures and content of our multiple beautiful areas in the region. And luckily we have lots of those places. Oh yeah, never running out of places to go. So So what's um, kind of give me an idea. So you mentioned like the canyon and Shoshone Falls. But what, what, if someone has like no idea what Idaho looks like, because I know when I moved to Idaho, I moved to southeastern Idaho from from the Midwest, and I just pictured kind of more what northern Idaho looks like. I pictured mm-hmm. like lots of trees, um, and then I got here and it's more a desert landscape. Yeah. And so I think there's lots of different landscapes that you can encounter in Idaho. So if someone has no idea what Idaho is going to look like, kind of paint a picture for them. Oh, gosh, that is difficult I since I would say Idaho is the most diverse landscape in all of the United States because you can go from mountains to desert to aquifers that are aqua blue mm-hmm. and then sand dunes and into lava tunnels. It's really crazy, but gosh, I guess I would describe the train as 
Well, if we're talking specifically here, desert. Yeah. With the oasis that yeah. you can ha- find hidden below. <laughs> right. So there's like hot pools and waterfalls. Yes. And little like like pools at the end of rivers and things like that, right? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. The ones that really shocked me, I remember the first time going to Box Canyon, which is an aquifer that comes from underground and it's bright blue water and it's freezing cold. <laughs> um, but the first time I saw it, I thought I was in Greece or Italy <laughs> because the water was so blue and amazing and I couldn't believe it was in the middle of farms. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Um, so tell me, um, when you're not out adventuring for your job, what do you what are you doing normally? Um, so I have a dog. Ooh, I got him right away to be my hiking buddy because I wasn't sure how nice the locals would be. <laughs> um, so usually him and I are out running or biking, playing fetch, and I love photography. So usually, even if I'm not doing it for work, I try to be out to be taking pictures. What kind of dog do you have? He is a Blue Healer Border Collie. Oh, His I name is cute. Atlas. <laughs> yep. He loves Southern Idaho. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. So, um... So into photography, that's so that's obviously super helpful for you in your job. So what did you study at school to make kind of like the perfect fit for this job? So my degree was business entrepreneurship, which mm-hmm. led me to actually opening my own company. Um, so Southern Idaho Tourism is my main job. But since I've moved here, I've had multiple companies reach out to me to also help them with their social media and do different photography. So really, the opportunity has been endless here. And yeah. I've even had to turn clients away because I've been so busy oh, with awesome. all of the other clients. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So, um, so tell me kind of about the difference, because like, I feel like South Dakota, you like you said, is kind of similar. It's out west, and, and it's I think high desert is kind of what I picture a lot of South Dakota. Um, but was there much difference for you for moving here, or was it pretty similar? Um, winters are incredible because <laughs> right now it's probably negative twenty ish in my hometown, no, and you know <laughs> it's fifty here now. So it's been amazing living in the desert because winters are so easy. I mean, you can be out running and hiking almost any day and you don't have to freeze. (laughs) And that's like a a misconception I think people have about Idaho that it's like cold here all the time. Mm -hmm. And and certainly there are places in Idaho that get a lot of snow because we have lots of ski resorts, but particularly for Southern Idaho, it's so temperate. We have such a mild winter. And so that is really nice. I've been loving it. Yeah. I would not like negative 20. Nope. Nope. No, that's not for me. Very cold. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Um, So tell me, you're fairly young. And I think sometimes people's perception of small towns is that there's not going to be that young people aren't going to enjoy it. So do you want to tell me kind of your perception as a young person as far as like being in Twin Falls or in other communities and what other people, young people in particular, if they're thinking about moving, why they might want to consider it? Yeah. So when I first moved here, I was 22 and we did kind of realize that there wasn't a ton of nightlife going on. So we weren't sure how to make friends. But within a year, um, downtown has opened two new breweries and the bars are popping now (laughs) Um, but really it's been the best to meet friends at different events that I've gone to and uh, after probably six months I would say we established a really good friend group who like to go outdoors and like to go hike Um, so I would say the small town not many young people is absolutely a lie especially in Twin Falls because it's popping here (laughs) so what are some of the events that you went to that you where you like really got to meet people what what do you think would be a good ones for people to check out. So I did go to a couple young professionals. I made a few friends from that. Um, And then there was a women in business conference that I went to. And I met one of my best friends from there. And she ended up introducing me to a ton of other people. Um, Trivia night at Kodo is always fun. fun. Yep, You always meet people there because everyone's, you know, getting involved. Um, and yeah, I think that was about it. That's awesome. Um, so did you move here with someone or did you move here solo? Yeah. So I moved at the time he was my fiance. I drug him out here. (laughs) Um, and he didn't have any jobs at all. He didn't have a degree and he was able to find a job within a month. Um, so that's really awesome if you're bringing something with someone with you. Um, and he's now my husband. Oh, congratulations. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Is he from South Dakota too? He is also from South Dakota. He's from West River and I'm from East River. Oh, yeah. Bridge in the Divide. Yes. The Divide. There's a, there's an argument between the two of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, what's his impression been like? Is he, I know he's coming from similar places, but has, his, has he enjoyed it the same? Is he into the same sort of things? Yeah, he did. Right away, we kind of shared the same. We were worried that we wouldn't make friends. Um, and he's very shy. So it was hard for him to go out and be as, you know, talkative as I usually was. But he has an awesome friend group now. They all met actually at Gemstone Climbing. Oh, and nice. Yeah, so that gym is great to meet people. Um, there's a gym and a climbing wall. So everyone kind of just 
just took him in and now he's really loving it here. That's awesome. That's amazing. Um, so I want you, I want to go back and talk to you a little bit about some of the things that people can see and do here. The, the experiencers are so diverse and I think there's probably something for everybody. Mm -hmm. You want to share a little bit about kind of that spectrum of things people can do if they're coming to Southern Idaho? Yeah, definitely. So if you're more into just driving up to a spot and looking out, um, Shoshone Falls is perfect for that and Box Canyon as well. You can go right out to the lookout. Um, but if you're more into hiking, you know, we have like six mile hikes to Alpine Lakes, which is Independence Lakes. That's probably my favorite place to go. Tell me more about that one. Okay, so that is up into the mountains um, near Albion, mm -hmm. and you drive up a gravel road that not many people use, so <laughs> just be careful if you do this, um, but you park at the campground, and it's a six-mile round trip to three different beautiful lakes at the top of Cache Peak. Okay. Um, and I went in the summer, and all the flowers were blooming. There oh, was wow. uh, the Indian paintbrush everywhere, the purple flowers, yeah. um, so it's a really magical place up that there. That sounds beautiful. Yeah. I haven't been up there. I'll have to check it You'll out. Have to go. It's incredible. Yeah, awesome. Okay, I totally interrupted you before you were giving me a whole list. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you're more into little hikes, going down in Twin Falls, the Snake River Canyon is great. They have Mogensen Trail and Auger Falls. Um, Auger Falls is great for bikers as well, but you can also go down there, let your dogs run. That's my dog's favorite place to <laughs> run. Um, and they can kind of get in the river and swim. Um, and there's kayaking everywhere, which yeah. I've really enjoyed. Yeah. So it seems like you're like super adventurous and like getting out. So do you, is it mostly like travel here or have you always been into travel or is it something that's kind of blossomed since you've taken on this role? Um, I've always been really into travel, which is why I was interested in I was interested in social media, but specifically travel social media. Um, so I've actually been to 14 countries. Oh. I started when I was 18 traveling because I finally had money. Yeah. Um, and so I really wanted to move somewhere where it felt like I was traveling every day. And you can drive 20 minutes anywhere in any direction here. And yeah. it feels like you're in a different country almost. That's so, awesome. So yeah, it's been a perfect fit for me. That's amazing. I think um, that's so true because if you, you head north, you know, you, you're in the Sun Valley or Crater's of the moon mm -hmm. and that's very different and if you head west you can get to like Hagerman and Absolutely. that area is completely different and then even just the river you know in Twin Falls you're high up above the river on the canyon rim but if you go um, east a little bit to Burley you can be like right on the river yes. and just yeah. different experiences yeah and it's really easy to travel not just in Idaho but around here too it's we're almost in like a mecca where you can be eight hours and you can be in Portland or you know California and yeah. to Moab so it's been it's been awesome living here yeah so you guys get out and do some of those bigger adventures pretty yeah, often we try to I think I've been to Portland four times already oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and then you're like at the coast and short time. Yeah, after it's yeah. it's a really easy drive and yeah, yeah. love it. <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, kind of top things um, people should consider or like look into since you've made the move. Um, what are some things people should think, consider if they're thinking about moving here, um, or maybe they've come out for a trip and now they want to dive deeper into like yeah. making a move here. So right away, it was a little difficult for us to find a place to rent. Mm -hmm. And looking at how much the markets boomed, we really regret not buying immediately, mm -hmm. but we are buying a house now. Oh, congratulations. Yes. <laughs> so it's still good, but I would suggest investing in real estate here because it's such an affordable place to live. Yeah. And I'm assuming it's just going to keep booming kind of how Boise has been. So I would suggest buying a house yeah. <laughs> right away, just investing in it and staying. Um, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think a lot of people that have maybe lived here for a long time are like, geez, housing prices are getting high, but like they're still so affordable compared to oh, yeah. so many other places to live. Even Boise, where like half the median price of what Boise is. And so yeah. it's still a good opportunity, I think, for people who are moving from elsewhere to buy that first home that maybe they can't buy wherever they're living now. Yeah, absolutely. It's very affordable to live here. I was looking at jobs all over the West and nothing really made sense except for Idaho, just because right coming out of college, you know, right. you need yeah. to save some money. So yeah. Yeah, we've been just building stuff now and yeah. making money. So yeah, and is your husband liking his new job? Yes, he yeah. is a parts manager at Subaru now. Oh, nice. Um, yep, he was able to climb the ladder right away, and so he manages the whole part uh, department, and he really loves it. That's awesome. That's yeah. fantastic. Um, so. Um, outside of maybe the Twin Falls area, um, events or things that people should check out, things that are going on outside of the Twin Falls area? Yeah, um, so not any anytime soon, but Camas Lily Days in oh, Fairfield yes. is absolutely amazing. Um, mm -hmm. Those purple flowers just get me every time at the yeah. base of the mountains. 
Um, and on Fairfield topic, I love snowboarding at Soldier Mountain. That's yeah. probably my favorite mountain because the powder is always like up to your knees. It's oh, amazing. Nice. Yeah. Um, and Pomerel is great for that as well. And Rupert is always fun to visit because yeah. they have a different event every month. They had the beat drop for New <laughs> Year's and their Rupert Christmas was just beautiful. Yeah. And for people who don't know what the beat drop is, like it's a sugar beet that they drop, like a giant one, like like they dropped the ball for New Year's yeah. Eve. Yeah. And it wasn't like an ugly beat. It was beautiful and sparkly and blue <laughs> and it fell from the sky. It was awesome. Yeah. That's, <laughs> and they do have, they've been having so many good programming and events over yes. at the square after it's been remodeled and all the things going on at the Wilson Theater. Mm -hmm. And it's a really cute town with lots of fun things for families. Yeah, their town is beautiful now. Yeah. Yep. Lots of awesome things. So tell me um, about, so when you when did you know you wanted to come to Idaho? Was that like in college or was that something earlier? So when I was a middle schooler, I got really obsessed with mountains. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw the sawtooth in a picture and I just thought they were the most beautiful, jagged looking mountains. I saw the iconic picture of Redfish Lake and I was like, wow, I need to go there. <laughs> so I'd actually never been to Idaho before I moved. Um, but so when, you didn't even come check it out first? You're like, no, nope, I'm going. <laughs> I was, you know, busy graduating college. So I actually was hired in April, the month before I graduated. Um, but before then, I started interviewing with Southern Idaho Tourism and started looking at their website and just mm -hmm. seeing how many amazing things really were here. So then Idaho went to the top of my list immediately. I just wanted to be here. Um, and so I graduated on some Friday in May and I moved to Idaho the next day and oh that my was goodness. my first time ever being here. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. So the sawtooth in person, do they live up to the height? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to kayak on redfish this summer. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah, there's so much to do up in the sawtooth, whether that's mm -hmm. like longer backpacking trips and, yeah. and kayaking or paddleboarding and fishing if people like to fish and yep. just lots of camping opportunities and then winter sports, there's tons to do up there. In the oh, yeah. Yep. yeah. There's winter sports all around. It seems like we only have one ski resort in South Dakota that's actually a hill yeah you know? <laughs> so coming here it's like just in our area there's three within an hour and then you go another half hour and there's four more and it's been really great that's yeah especially if you're into snowboarding having yeah. all those options yeah and yeah. Have you been up to Magic Mountain? Yes, I yeah. have. I went for the first time actually a couple Saturdays ago. And that one's, it's nice because it's smaller, so it's not too crowded. Yeah. And the workers are just so sweet. Yeah, I've heard people up there are so nice and yeah. it's really pretty up They're there. always cheering you on when you're going down. <laughs> I taught my friend to snowboard on the, they have a little bunny hill and then they have, you know, the big mountain. And he was just encouraging her and she got it. <laughs> I, that's my really where I need to go. I definitely need like a cheer squat because I'm terrible on the snow. So I Magic is your place. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so what have you, are you, like, we haven't really talked about, like, we talked a little bit about, like, Kodo and places like that. Where are some other places you guys like to go, like, to socialize or things like that that I know we're growing a nightlife here, but, yeah, what are some of your favorite places? Yeah, so Kodo's probably our number one. We yeah. really like their beers. Um, and Milner's Gate just released their new beer as well. Oh, nice. um, My husband's a big beer guy, yeah. so he was very impressed with those tastes. Yeah. Um, Anchor Bistro might be yes. our favorite restaurant yeah. um, to go to. I'm vegetarian, so mm -hmm. all of these ones I've listed have so many options for me. Um, I, so I assume you've had the broccoli tacos. Oh, home. yes. Yeah, they're oh, yes. so good. So delicious. I know for people listening, they're probably like, broccoli tacos, that sounds super weird, but they are so good. Yeah, it tastes like chicken, yeah. kind of, yeah. honestly. <laughs> um, and they have their tofu there. It's coconut yeah. fried, I believe, and it is the best tofu I've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> it's delicious. And then have you had their, they have like a cheese um, platters. Oh, I've holding. seen them. Yeah, yeah, they're so funky looking. Yeah, I know. They're like this big, come on, this big long board. And one of the cheeses they have on there is um, grilled cheese. So oh. one of the, there's a dairy here in Gooding that makes grilling cheese. And so when you put it like in a pan to grill it, it doesn't melt. It just kind of gets fried and crispy. Oh, cool. It is the most delicious cheese. So if you have a chance to try it, I, I recommend know what it I'm to getting everybody. next. Yes. <laughs> it's super awesome. good. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. And I'd like that Milner's and Kodo, they're both breweries that aren't very far from each other, but they mm -hmm. have very different vibes. So depending on what yeah. kind of you're looking for, for your nightlife, it's um, different. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Milner's is very like elite almost and very nice Fancy, and Kodo's yeah. more like relaxed and yeah. They have a lot of live music there and yes. trivia nights and stuff are yep. fun. Trivia nights are the best. <laughs> yeah, I, I've only been to trivia night once and it was good that I was in a big group because it left to my own devices. I would have done very terrible. Somehow I had a group of six of us and we ended up winning. Oh, nice. I could not believe it and we got a gift card. <laughs> it was awesome. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And Anchor Beach Show is super good. They have really good food and I like their patio in the summertime. Yes, yeah. Oh, another great brewery is the one in Buell. Have 
Have you been oh, to Magic Valley Brewery? I have been there, yeah. Yes, that might be my husband's favorite. The <laughs> owner is so sweet. He always gives him tours, and we just love their beer. And yeah. it's so affordable. It's way cheaper than most any other brewery you would go to. Yeah, and they have fun, like, bar food type of food in there, yep. too, that's different that you yeah. don't see everywhere. Their pretzels are to die for. <laughs> I haven't had their pretzels. I'll have to try those there you next go. time I'm there. That's awesome. Um, I'm trying to think. So... Um, Tell me what your business entrepreneurship program was like in college, because I know um, we've talked to a few entrepreneurs here and starting businesses, and you've obviously started your own business. And so I'm kind of learn, interested to learn kind of what went into that program and what helped you start your own business here. Yeah, so I went to Black Hill State University, which is in Spearfish, South Dakota, um, and I did it in four years, and it's actually AASB accredited. I might have said those letters <laughs> wrong. Um, so I joined the Enactus program, which is there, um, which kind of encourages business people to become little entrepreneurs and yeah. we would do competitions and stuff um so that really built my re resume I was able to be their media coordinator so I kind of got the taste of being in charge of a media account and getting content for them um and by the time I graduated I felt really confident that I could do what I wanted to do even yeah. though a lot of people told me you'll probably just be a receptionist right away to start off, but I'm glad I kind of jumped into it and got my dream job and started the company. Yeah. Um, so I'm very thankful I got that degree. That's awesome. So what do you say would say are some tips for somebody who maybe hasn't had the benefit of getting a degree in business entrepreneurship, but has an uh, passion that they want to turn into a business? What are some tips or resources you would give to them about how to be successful in that? Watch YouTube and write blogs and read blogs. Yeah. I think that's really stemmed my creativity. I would just read all of my favorite, favorite travel, travel influencers blogs, yeah. kind of see what they were doing. And then yeah. I tailored it to fit what I was doing. And I started putting my own blogs out there. And uh, to get into photography, I bought a $200 Nikon from a woman from Guam <laughs> um, my senior year of college. Mm -hmm. And I just started practicing and practicing. I went out probably every morning and every night after school or in between classes just to really practice my passion because I fell in love with it immediately. And that's really the reason I got my job here was because I got so into photography. So if you're passionate about something, just 100% dive into it and dedicate yeah. as much time as you can to it and then chase it. Yeah. And any um, thoughts on like what it was like starting business here? So you started a business in the community that you were brand new to. And I think that would probably be intimidating for people because the networks and stuff like that, that's something you kind of had to build from scratch. Yeah. So uh, um, Melissa with Southern Idaho Tourism really introduced me to a lot of great people. Um, so starting a business wasn't too difficult for me because I really just had to open up an Idaho company yeah. um, just so tax purposes would be <laughs> a little simpler. Um, but networking with everyone in this town, they introduce you to everyone else in the town. So yeah. each of my different um, companies I work for, I've been introduced from um, other leaders in the town. Yeah, so. that's awesome. And it's nice. And that's, I think, one of the nice things about living in a smaller community is that everyone kind of knows other people and are willing to introduce you to people and, yep. and kind of helps you build that community and network too, which is really nice. Yeah, the amount of references they've <laughs> let me give and have and yeah, they've been really accommodating for me. So what's the uh, name of your business? I don't think we've shared that. Earth to Sarah Media. Earth to Sarah Media. <laughs> yep. So mostly doing like other social media content for people or just general photography or tell me more about what you do. Yeah, so I work for Twin Falls Economic Development. I run their social media account. I work for Soldier Mountain Ski Resort. I run their social media account. Um, and both of those go in hand with creating content for them as well. And then I work for Mid Snake RC and D, and I do their Facebook page. And lastly, I do real estate photography. Oh, awesome! Yeah, a whole bunch of stuff. And I have to say, the Twin Falls Economic Development Social has been so great. I've been really enjoying Thank the you. content down there. And I think it's a great resource too for people who are thinking about moving to the area because yeah. you share like things to do and events, but also stuff about businesses and job opportunities. And it's yeah. a really kind of diverse, I think, quality information for people who are thinking about moving to the area. Yeah, I've met some other new young couples and they said they have found the page and they looked at it. And once they saw all the like pretty hikes and different opportunities and the amount of companies we have there, they felt a lot more comfortable with moving here. So 
social media is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, and then of course doing social media for Southern Idaho tourism. Yeah. Right. So what's the how is it? What's the handle for that one if they want to find it? Um, visit Southern Idaho. Visit Southern Idaho. Yeah, it also probably comes up as Southern Idaho tourism. tourism. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And I know on the website for Southern Idaho tourism, there's so much great information about like hikes and things to do and just really good information that's been helpful for me, even though I live here finding new hikes and things to yeah. go to. Yeah, yeah, I write um, itineraries and just like day trips and adventure pages of a specific location. So if you're ever looking for a hike, we have you covered. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, I want to talk, I want to delve into some of the further areas. We talked a little bit about Fairfield, which is super cute. It's got a, such a cute downtown and the Camas Lilies are super great. Mm-hmm. And we've talked on this show before about the bull riding rodeo that they do downtown, which is super neat. And I need to get up there and see that one day. Um, any other things out in kind of the more remote places that you would send people off to go see? Yeah. On your way to Fairfield, Gooding is a great town to stop in. Um, they have a little city of rocks, which is totally different from the actual city of rocks, but that is a wilderness study area and you can walk for miles and be totally secluded. I mean, I usually don't see any humans out there. <laughs> it's very quiet and there's yellow flowers all over in the spring and the rock formations are what I've heard a geological wonder is what (laughs) people always say Um, and there's a lot of lava tunnels out there so tea kettle cave is one of my favorites to go to there's ferns growing at the bottom of a cave that's shaped as a tea kettle have you been there I haven't I've seen some pictures of it but I didn't know about the ferns Yeah. yeah so you go down the spout of the tea kettle and then at the base of the tea kettle like where water would sit in a real one um there's a rock pile and beautiful green ferns grow year round I was there in November and they were still fully green, fully oh, bloomed. Wow. Yeah. So I think they stay year round. I haven't been in the winter cause it's a little harder to yeah. access, but then in the summer they just super blossom and the whole bottom of the cave is green ferns. It's beautiful. Oh my goodness. I have to go. You have to go. Yeah. yeah. It's a little tricky getting there. The roads are very bumpy, but yeah. <laughs> you can park a little ways back Maybe and walk. Subaru or four wheel drive. Yes. Good. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Any other good places that might be off the radar? Um, let's see. Shoshone has yeah. an amazing lava tunnel and it's called Black Magic Canyon. Mm-hmm. There's two different parts of it and one part of it is a slot canyon that you would find in Utah almost, but it's pitch black. Mm-hmm. Um, and that might be my new favorite place. I just discovered it this last fall. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So um, it's like for hiking, or is it mostly like you're yeah. kind of walking slash climbing over rocks, mm-hmm. lava rocks. Lava rocks, yes. yeah. yeah. And that's another thing that's interesting about our area is that you'll go from, from someplace like, and then just all of a sudden be next to a lava field of rocks yeah. and things like you that. You wouldn't expect this lava field to be there at all because it looks pretty much just like farmland. Um, and then we got a drone shot of it and it's just this giant cut through the surface. It's <laughs> really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, any other things people should know about Idaho if um, they've never been here or just don't know anything about it, just kind of from a perspective of a, of a new person coming? Yeah, I definitely suggest coming and at least looking at it if you're considering moving here because it's been really... It's been perfect for me and my husband to fit in and find what we really love. Um, And you will never get bored with hiking because (laughs) there is something for everyone. And if you're afraid of winters, cold winters, I suggest living in the valley because you can always road trip up to Sun Valley in a quick hour and a half. Um, but you get 50 degree days like today in January. Right, so nice. Right? So beautiful out. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. I think the most snow, I so I've been here three winters now. Okay. I think the most snow we've had is like two inches maybe. And yeah. then it's gone pretty It doesn't quick. stick. It doesn't stay. So you get a, like a little chance to, to jump in the snow if you want to. Yeah. And then it's immediately gone and you can, yeah. yeah. And if you really crave the snow, you can drive like 40 minutes south into the South Hills and they're all covered. So yeah. it's perfect. It's perfect. Awesome. Uh, well, Sarah, thank you so much for being on the show. I really enjoyed talking to you and we'll make sure to share links to some of those social channels so people can check out your beautiful t- photography and kind of know what's going on in Southern Idaho. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Secrets Out Idaho. You can follow Southern Idaho Economic Development on social media or visit southernidaho.org to learn more. Please take a moment to leave a rating and review and subscribe so you can be the first to hear more Secrets Out Idaho. Until next time.